So there are two primary types of brush cursors in Photoshop. You can also call it brush tips. Number one is the normal one, the one that we regularly use. It takes the shape of the brush. So if I'm painting with a round brush, it becomes round, right? If you choose, let's say, a splatter brush. So I'm going to go to Special Effects Brushes, Kyle's Splatter Brush, and have a look. The brush takes the shape of a splatter, right? So this is the normal tip. However, there's one more, and that is called the precise tip. It's a crosshair. If you press the caps lock key, the brush changes to that, right? No matter what kind of brush you choose, even if I go and choose a hard round brush, it is still a crosshair. Now, the stupid me, uh, when I was starting out with Photoshop, I would see something like this and I would go to Google and type in brush preview not working. What's wrong with my brush? And uh, later I found out that my caps lock was on and I turned off the caps lock and the brush was back to normal. Well, have you ever wondered why this feature exists? I mean, what was Adobe smoking? When you have a brush that looks like the brush you chose, why do we need a brush which cannot even tell what shape or size your brush is? Why do we need that? Well, to be very honest, the answer is very, very interesting. And it's a genius creation. There's an actual use of this feature. Let's solve the mystery together in this tutorial. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back to the magical world of Photoshop and let us learn the purpose of precision brush in Photoshop with a few simple examples. So here we have the S curve test. Let's say you have to draw a brush stroke starting from point A and go to point B. If I were to do it with a regular brush, a regular hard round brush, and let's say I had a small brush. So let me decrease the size of the brush and I knew what size would be, what shape it would be. Well, it's simple to do. I'm just going to start drawing here and take it to point B. Very simple. But now let me ask you this. What if you wanted to do it with a pressure sensitive brush? where pressure controls the size of the brush, where the size is not determined, only the maximum size is determined. Other sizes from small to maximum is controlled by the pressure in your hand if you're using a graphic tablet. So if I were to choose a brush like hard round pressure size, and by the way, it only applies if you're using a graphic tablet. Anyway, so if I choose that, and now let me just paint in the middle. If I press very softly, is it the size of the brush tip? No, right? If I press a little harder, is it still the size of the brush tip? No. So the brush size here depends upon the pressure in your hand. Now, let's say you have to start with a very small and thin brush stroke from A, make it thick in between, and when it comes to B, it becomes thin again. Now, when you go ahead with this brush shape and you try to paint in here, you would have to guess the center of the brush, right? So I can quickly go like this and start painting. See, it missed the point, right? If the brush was even bigger, it would be harder. So if I make the brush bigger, and by the way, if you're seeing double brush preview, it's the fault of my screen recorder, please ignore it. So if I had a bigger brush, I would have to guess its center. And if I start right like this, see, I missed the point. Right? If I'm just painting very, very softly, you get what I'm trying to say. I'm missing the point in here. I'm not reaching A. See, every time I try to do something, I'm missing the point. However, in this case, if I had the precision brush by pressing the caps lock, now I would exactly know where the center is, right? So now I can just start from right there and end right here because I have a precision brush. I know what the center is. I don't have to guess the center. Are you getting it? Let's move on to the next example. And then I'm going to share with you the conclusion of why actually we use the precision brush. So let's say for a second example, we are writing something. So let's go ahead and first of all, choose a wet media brush, ultimate inking, thick and thin, pretty good brush. Let's make it a little larger. Yes, it takes the shape of the brush, which is pretty nice. Let's start writing something. So here I'm just going to write my last name. See. I missed that. I was trying to continue from there, but I couldn't. If I had a precision brush, I would know. So if I still take this brush, I don't know what the center is. Now determining a center of a round brush, a completely circle brush is very simple. And I was making mistakes on purpose with the first example. But with this example, it's very hard. It's actually impossible 
to determine the center of this random shape. Even if I tried to guess it to the best of my abilities, I would still miss it just by a little bit. So in this case, if we switch to a precision brush, now I know where the center is and I can continue from here. Now also, when you're drawing the tittle, and by the way, tittle is a thing that you draw on I's and J's, the dot in there. And if you have a normal tip, it would be very hard to determine the position of it. If you switch to the precision brush tip, you exactly know where that point will be. Moving on to example number three, and you might ask, Unmesh, there are so many great advantages of using the crosshair as opposed to the normal brush tip. Why do we still need the normal brush tip? Well, to know the shape and size. Because in many cases, you want to see the preview of the shape and the size. So let's say you were just painting some watercolor splatters. So I have some watercolor splatter brushes. So I'm going to go with this one. All right. Now, as soon as I choose this brush, I have the shape preview of how this brush is going to look. If I increase or decrease the size, it's going to exactly tell me after I paint how it is going to be. Now looking at this, I can do some changes like rotate the brush as well. So if I go to window and then brush settings here, I can even rotate the brush to match. I can even flip the X axis and also the Y axis if I wish, and then dab and create this texture right there. So sometimes definitely we need to know the shape and size of the brush even when you whoops. Whoa. So most of the times we sure do need to know the shape and size of the brush even if you're using simple brushes like the regular soft round brush or the hard round brush when size is not dependent on pressure and it's fixed we need to know the size and the shape as well. Now some of you might also go ahead and ask Unmesh what if I want both? What if I want both the shape and the crosshair? Is it possible? Well, yes, it is possible. If you go to edit and then preferences down here, if you're using a Mac, that would be under Photoshop and then preferences. Inside here, go to cursors. So here you can simply check show crosshair in brush tip. That way it will show both. And if you hit OK, see, it's showing a crosshair in between. I don't know if you can see it. There's a crosshair in between and there's also the brush shape. So if you're into that, you can do it. You can also do a couple other things. If you go to preferences and then cursors, if you only want to see the precision brush tip as a default and the shape or the normal brush tip as caps locked, well, just choose precise right here. Hit OK. That way you will only see the precise brush. And if you press caps lock, the normal brush will show up with a crosshair on it. So depending upon the style of work you do in Photoshop, you can choose what suits you the best. So just to wrap things up, where does crosshairs make sense? Well, whenever you're using pressure sensitive brushes where pressure controls the size and you need to know the center, well, that's when crosshair or precise brush tip is what you need. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would also like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.